Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Oh, yeah, let's talk about these words on page 154. Uh, Let's see. The first word is brewery, B-R-E-W-E-R-Y. This is a noun from 1658. Uh, If it sounds like my voice is lower, that is because I've only been awake for about an hour, and your voice tends to be lower in the morning, early in the morning, or late at night. Uh, Okay, and I, uh, I wish it could sound like this all the time. A plant where malt liquors are produced. That is a brewery. Next, we have brewmaster, one word, noun from 1904. A person who supervises the brewing process of malt liquors. They have a great job, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, Next, we have brew pub, one word, noun from 1984. A restaurant that sells beverages brewed on the premises. Uh, I mean, there's also the word pub, um, so I guess they don't, they don't obviously brew the drinks on the premises there, but it seems weird that it wasn't until 1984 that they actually brewed them on the premises. Hmm. Uh, we have some brew pubs in the, this relatively small town that I live in, uh, which is funny because Prohibition practically started here. Uh, it was a dry city up until, I think, the late 70s, uh, and now... There are lots of breweries, brew pubs. There's even a distillery. All right, moving on to brewski. It's like the word brew and the word ski, the two things that you put your feet on to go down a snowy mountain. This is a noun from 1978, uh, but of course it doesn't have to do anything with skiing. Um, It's just the slang for the number four definition for the word beer. And it's from... Uh, that ski suffix is this is a suffix in Slavic surnames. Uh, well, I guess we'll learn more about that possibly in the S's. But uh, how, who, how did that, where did that start? How did they start putting ski at the end of things to denote something? I don't know. That's, that's, I like it. I don't know why, but I like it. All right, moving on to Briar, B-R-I-A-R. You could also spell it B-R-I-E-R. This is the first form. It's a noun from the 15th century. A plant, as a rose, blackberry, or green briar, having a usually woody and thorny or prickly stem. Also, a mass or twig of these. And briary is an adjective. Uh, Now we have the second form of briar. This is a noun from... Wow, there's a lot of etymology for this one that I'm skipping over. Uh, This is from 1882. A tobacco pipe made from the root or stem of a European heath. And the scientific name is Erica arborea. Uh, Let's see. Where is this from? This is short for briar pipe, which we will not be reading because it's not here in the book. Uh, That is from briar, which is a wood of the European heath. From the French bruyere, which means heath. From Middle French, bruyere, spelled differently. Uh, From vulgar Latin, brucaria. From Latin, brucus, which means heather. Or would it be heather? I think it's heather. Uh, Of Celtic origin, akin to the old Irish, freuk, uh, F-R-O-E-C-H, which means heather. Akin to the Greek word, eriki, which means heather. And that's that. Um, I, I, I don't know what Heather is in this case. I mean, I've heard it used in various ways, but I never really understood what it was. Uh, so that's that. Now we are moving on to Briard, B-R-I-A-R-D, noun from circa 1929, any of an old French breed of large, long-coated sheepdogs. Briard. Uh, this is French from the word brie, which is a district in France. So that's probably where they uh, bred those dogs or named those dogs or something. Now we have bribe, B-R-I-B-E, first form, noun, from the 15th century. One, money or favor given or promised in order to influence the judgment or conduct of a person in a, a position of trust. Uh it's, it's sort of hard to understand. If you don't know what that word means, that definition doesn't really help. I feel like you need a, a practical example. Uh, but real quick, I'll read number two. Something that serves to induce or influence. Uh, so typically when you hear about bribing, you think of um, 
you know, you want somebody to do something and, you know, this happens a lot with kids, actually, if there's any kids listening. If uh, your parents want you to do something, they might uh, bribe you with a treat of some kind. They say, hey, if you do this, I'll give you some ice cream. That's a bribe. And, you you know, you're smarter than that. You, you should you should uh, negotiate with them, I think. You, you, do, you, do you know what no, negotiate means? We'll get to the ends. You'll be, uh, you'll be an adult by the time you learn that one. All right, uh, this is from Middle English. It is a morsel given to a beggar or bribe. Uh, it's from Anglo-French, which means morsel. It just means morsel. All right, now we have the second form of bribe. This is a verb from 1528. Uh, first is transitive, to induce or influence by or as if by bribery. So it's the act of doing the thing that we talked about before. Uh, and then the intransitive definition is to practice bribery. Bribable is an adjective and a weird word because what is that pertaining to? Is it the person is, I think it's the person is bribable. Oh, that person, they're, they're so bribable. You can get them to do anything you want as long as you give them something that they want. Uh, I guess that would be that. Um, I guess the thing that is the bribe could be bribable. Like, oh, that's a thing that you could really use to bribe somebody. It's very bribable. Uh, and then a bribe is a noun. I think that's the one who's being bribed, which is a word that sounds very weird now. And then briber is also a noun, and I think that would be the one who is doing the bribing, the one who says, I'll give you that ice cream. Although I guess it could be the other way around. I don't know the logistics of that. All right, next we have bribery. This is a noun from 1549, the act or practice of giving or taking a bribe. It's the whole act. There is some bribery happening with the briber and the bribee. There's bribing with a bribe. Uh, please write me a sentence that uses every single one of those words and send it to me. All right, next we have bric-a-brac, B-R-I-C hyphen A hyphen B-R-A-C. This is a noun from 1840. One, a miscellaneous collection of small articles commonly of ornamental or sentimental value. And then the synonym is the word curios. It looks like curious, but that's spelled with an O-U-S. This is just C-U-R-I-O-S. And I think that is the plural form of the word curio. Uh, and let, maybe it's a different word. I don't know. Curios. Number two, something suggesting bric-a-brac especially in extraneous decorative quality. It's kind of a vague uh, idea. Uh, you can call whatever you want bric-a-brac, really. Uh, this just says it's a French word, bric-a-brac. There's an accent over the A in the middle, uh, but it doesn't really give any more information than that. Uh, so moving on to the first form of the word bric, B-R-I-C-K. Uh, this is a noun from the 15th century. One is plural. So you would say either bricks, or you could take off the S and just say brick again. That would be fine, uh, plural. A handy-sized unit of building or paving material, typically being rectangular and about two and a quarter inches by three and three quarter inches by eight inches. And for those who use the metric system, that is 57 millimeters by 95 millimeters by 203 millimeters. Uh, and of moist clay hardened by heat. How did they decide on the size of a brick? That is very interesting, I think, because none of those numbers, except for the eight, makes any sense. Two and a quarter, three and a quarter, 57, 95, 203. Who was the first one to design the brick and say, yeah, that's a good size? It doesn't use any round numbers, really, but who cares? It's a good size. All right, number two, a good-hearted person. We call that a brick. Three, a rectangular compressed mass as of ice cream. Mmm, a brick of ice cream. Uh, four, a semi-soft cheese with numerous small holes, smooth texture, and often mild flavor. A brick of cheese. Five, synonyms are gaff, G-A-F-F-E, and blunder. And that is used especially in the phrase drop a brick. Number six, a badly missed shot in basketball, as in, he threw up a brick. Uh, that one, I'm curious about the etymology. Where did that come from? Who was the first one to say, uh, to, to call a missed basketball shot a brick? Uh, but, but let's see. I think that's good for that. We are going to move on to the second form of brick. 
It is a transitive verb from 1592. One, to close, face, or pave with bricks. Usually used with the words up, in, or over. So you could brick something up, you could brick it in, or you could brick over. Number two, to render an electronic device, such as a smartphone, non-functional, as by accidental damage, malicious hacking, or software changes. So the definition itself just says to render non-functional. That's the whole definition. And then it, those are the examples. You're, I think a lot of people have probably had bricked phones. Maybe it's too old. Maybe whatever it is. Uh, I actually have um, an old PlayStation 3 that I only bought because of the Blu-ray capabilities way back in the day. Um, it came with a couple games, which I never played. I downloaded some demos, which I played a little bit. I like video games, but it was not something that I spent a lot of time on. So um, I used only I only used it for Blu-rays. But then one day, I was doing an update, and I think maybe the power went out or something, which, of course, is bad for an update, and the thing is just, it's, it's a brick. It's a brick. And then I, I found out I could I could send it into somewhere in New Jersey to get it fixed if I really wanted to, but that was going to cost a lot of money. So I just have this broken PlayStation 3 sitting there not doing anything. I kind of want to open it up and see what's inside and play around with it. I don't know. Any electronics nerds? Hit me up. All right, now we have brick and mortar. Could also be bricks and mortar. It's three words with hyphens. This is an adjective from 1988. Relating to or being a traditional business serving customers in a building as contrasted to an online business, as in a brick and mortar store. So I find this interesting because uh, I didn't realize that there were online stores in 1988. I mean, technically, the internet existed. It didn't really get to the wide audiences until, I think, the mid-90s. I mean, even that was not a wide audience. Uh, So I just find this interesting that it was way back in 1988. I don't think I started hearing this word until probably at least 2000, if not after that. Uh, But it's the thing. It's weird. There are now online stores that was it at uh, uh, Amazon started making brick and mortar stores after they became an online thing? I don't know. It's weird. All right. Moving on to brick bat. One word. It's a, a brick and, and a, a flying bat. Uh, noun from 1579. One, a fragment of a hard material as a brick, especially one used as a missile. Huh? Okay. Uh, and then number two, an uncomplimentary remark, a brick bat. Uh, this is from brick plus the first form of the word bat, which means lump or fragment. I do not remember that whatsoever. Um, Yeah, I guess, okay. I mean, I guess if if a piece of a brick breaks off, that would be a brick bat, but then how is it used as a missile? I don't know. Uh, Now we have the last word. It is brick layer, all one word, spelled the normal way. Noun from the 15th century, a person who lays brick. And brick lane is a noun. So we had brewery, brewmaster, brew pub, brewski, briar, briard, bribe, bribery, brick a brack, brick, brick and mortar, brick bat, brick layer. Um, I think I'm going to pick brick bat as the word of the episode because that one was just so interesting to me and different. Uh, but you know, I like some of the other ones. Brick a brack is good bribing people is good. I don't know. All right, we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, all of you lovely word nerds. Thank you for turning on this podcast. I hope that you are enjoying it as much as I enjoy saying it. Uh, The first word is brick red. Two words. Noun from 1810. A moderate reddish brown. We all know what brick red looks like. Unless you're colorblind, then you might be confused or if you're just blind in general, but most of us know what brick red looks like. Next is brick wall, two words, noun from the 15th century. One, a wall made of brick. Number two, an immovable block uh, or obstruction, as in the plan ran into a brick wall. Back to brick red real quick. There is a hospital in my town that had yellow bricks, I think, mostly this sort of yellowish hue, And they found out that people 
uh, didn't want to go there because they felt, I think this was sort of an unconscious thing, they felt that the yellow, it made them uncomfortable. So they hired a company to hand paint all of the bricks red. And now it's a red building. Moving on to brick work. One word, noun from 1580. Work of or with bricks and mortar. And with that, you make a brick and mortar store, maybe. Moving on to brickyard. One word, noun from 1731. A place where bricks are made. They make them, uh, where is it? Two and a quarter inches. Why can't I find it? Two and a quarter inches by two and three quarter inches by eight inches. Next is bricolage. You could also just say bricolage. B-R-I-C-O-L-A-G-E. This is a noun from 1960. Construction, as of a sculpture or a structure of ideas, achieved by using whatever comes to hand. Also, something constructed in this way. So you're just using whatever you got. And this is a French word from bricolaire, which means to putter about. You're just puttering about, grabbing the things that you have, and you construct something. Now we have bricolaire. Uh, bricolaire. Bricolaire. Something like that. B-R-I-C-O-L-E-U-R. This is a noun from 1965. One who engages in bricolage. This is a French word. It is one who putters about. Obviously very similar to the last one. Um, And yeah, if you can be a bricoleur making bricolage and maybe you're using bricks. Now we have bridle. First form noun from, I'm losing my place, from before the 12th century. A marriage festival or ceremony. Bridle. This is from, oh, interesting. Uh, this is from Middle English, Bredale, from Old English, Bredelu, B-R-Y-D-E-A-L-U, which is from breed plus ialu, which means ale, A-L-E, like the thing that you drink, I guess, and there's more at the word ale. Uh, I mean, I would have to go back to that word to double check, see if there's anything, any definitions that are not the thing that you drink, uh, but... I, I'm assuming that it is because it's very old and people, uh, you know, have always loved to drink. So, and it's a, uh, a wedding, a festival, a ceremony, it's a party. You have fun. A lot of people drink at those things. So, uh, I'm not surprised then that would be the case. Uh, next is bridal. Again, it is the second form. It is an adjective from the 13th century. One of or relating to a bride or a wedding. Synonym is nuptial. I want to say nuptial, but there's no U in there. N-U-P-T-I-A-L. Nuptial. Number two, intended for a newly married couple, as in a bridal suite, where they can go drink ale. Next is bridal wreath. Two words. Wreath is W-R-E-A-T-H. This is a noun from circa 1889. A spiria, or a spiria? It's probably spiria. Widely grown for its umbels of small white flowers born in spring. Born has an E at the end. And the scientific name is Spiraea, Spir, Spiraea, Spir, Spiraea prunifolia. Uh, S-P-I-R-A-E-A. That's that first word. Bridal wreath. All right, next we just have the word bride. Noun from before the 12th century. A woman just married or about to be married. And that's good for that. Next is bridegroom. All one word, noun, from the 14th century. A man just married or about to be married. And then um, I think it's really interesting, which um, maybe there's more in the etymology, but I think it's interesting that they added the, the male word or the masculine word to the end of the feminine word, which is typically not how things are done, uh, I like I like that actually. It's it sort of flips the script a little bit, uh, but then of course it just got shortened to, to groom. So let's look at this etymology. Uh, this is Middle English, and then I think it's more specifically Scottish. Uh, bridegroom, spelled funny, uh, which says by folk etymology. That's just what what by folk etymology. What does that even mean? Uh, from uh, Middle English bridegroom, from Old English braidguma. From brid plus guma, which means man, hmm, uh, akin to the Old High German brutgoma, 
which means bridegroom at there's and there's more at the word homage. This is so so oh bride oh the brid it means bride and the guma oh guma means man. Uh it's I still don't understand why they added it to the the female word. It's so it's so interesting. English is so interesting. Okay. Next is bride price. Not sure I like where this one's going. Uh, it's two words with a hyphen, noun, from 1876. A payment given, given by or in behalf of a prospective husband to the bride's family in many cultures. Uh, yeah, that, that happens. Next is bridesmaid. All one word, noun, from 1552. One, a woman who is an attendant of a bride. Two. One that finishes just behind the winner. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I've heard that a little bit. Sometimes they say always or never, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Sometimes that's literal. Sometimes it's talking about other things as well. Uh, so uh, based on that number one definition and, you know, just the way I, I'm imagining old times used to be, this was literally somebody who... Uh, was the attendant you know they would help them out they would i don't want to say slave servant might even be a a bad word um but you know as uh things evolved as times changed um you know it it sounds like it it hasn't changed all that much because technically the bridesmaid is still sort of the attendant they help them out they hold their bouquet they help with the with the long train of the dress um but now it's you know their their friend or or their uh, sister or cousin or whoever it is uh, that's now typically who who does that. I'm imagining back in the day it wasn't somebody who was close to them, except in the fact that they were their attendant. Next is bride well, all one word, noun from circa 1593, and we have the synonym prison. Uh, this is from uh, a London jail that was called Bridewell. So where did they get the name from? Was that somebody's name? Was, is it something else? Do I have to do some research? I don't know. Next is bridge. B-R-I-D-G-E. This is the first form of bridge. It is also our last word. We're going to do all three forms in this episode. Uh, this first one has a bunch of definitions. It is a noun from before the 12th century. 1A. A structure carrying a pathway or roadway over a depression or obstacle. Uh, and, you know, since we're on that, on the next column, there are five bridges, which I will try and quickly describe because I think this is going to be a long episode. So number one is called beam, and it's just a very, um, normal bridge. The, obviously the road goes straight across and then there's some, um, uh, guards on the side that just go straight across with some vertical posts to attach them to the actual bridge part where you walk or drive. Pretty simple. Number two is truss, T-R-U-S-S. Uh, so there, it's um, it's kind of like a the 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 posts that come up from the bridge, they kind of create an arc. Uh, in the middle, it's the highest point. At the ends, it's the lowest point. Uh, there's some uh, diagonal pieces and vertical pieces to keep the structure strong. Um, and then there's just a a piece that goes across all of them that creates an arc. Next is number three. It is arch. So the arch is actually below the bridge. There's two large vertical points that come that go down onto the, the ground. Um, and then there's a bunch of small vertical posts as well. But between the two big vertical posts, there is a an arch. Uh, keeping it all together. Next is suspension, number four. Uh, this is, uh, there's, in this example, there are, again, two vertical posts, two, two really big ones, um, about a third of the way on either side. Uh, they go below the, the structure, obviously, to keep it, uh, uh, in the ground or the water, but then they go way above as well. And then in between the two posts, there is, um, uh, some lines, uh, on, like, like the left side, they go down to the end of the bridge. But then, and the, and the same on the right side. But then, in between the two, uh, there is um, it goes. It creates sort of a, a, a backwards arch, upside down. Uh, I think the Golden Gate Bridge is an is, is a suspension bridge, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and then 
but number five is cable stayed, cable hyphen stayed. And again, there are these two vertical structures similar to suspension, but instead of creating this under uh, uh, upside down arch, uh, there are these cables that go from each of those vertical pieces down to many points on the bridge um, on, on both sides. You know, the left one has cables on the left and the right side, and then the right vertical piece has cables on the left and the right side. Should I post a picture of these? Maybe. All right, now we have 1B for bridge, a time, place, or means of connection or transition. Number two, something resembling a bridge in form or function as 2A, the upper bony part of the nose. Uh, also, the part of a pair of glasses that rests upon it. The bridge of the glasses sits on the bridge of the nose. 2B, a piece raising the strings of a musical instrument. And it says to see the violin illustration. Uh, so yes, the strings come down from the top uh, where you got the, got the little knobs to tune it. And then they uh, sit on a piece called the bridge way at the bottom. Uh, and, and that's where they end, pretty much. And now we have 2C, the forward part of a ship's superstructure from which the ship is navigated. Uh, 2D, we have the 2B definition for the word gantry. 2E, the hand as a rest for a billiards or pool cue. Also, a device used as a cue rest. Uh, yeah, they use that thing. Uh, so if it's if the ball is too far away, you, you use it uh, to to help you get there. Terrible description. Three a a musical passage linking two sections of a composition. Three b a partial denture anchored to adjacent teeth. Three c a connection as an atom or group of atoms that joins two different parts of a molecule as opposite sides of a ring. Four an electrical instrument or network for measuring or comparing resistances, inductances, ca capacitances, capita cap capacitances, that's a weird word, or impedances by comparing the ratio of two opposing voltages to a known ratio. Bridgeless is an adjective. There are so many definitions to this word. It's on a stringed instrument. It's in your mouth. It's for playing billiards. It's to go across a river. So many different things. Uh, now we... Oh, let's see. That's... Uh, 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 it's from Middle English brig, from Old English brigg, akin to the Old High German brucke, which means bridge, from OCS. What is OCS? Uh, I have a mark on this page. OCS. Old Church Slavic. I have not seen that before. Uh, from Old Church Slavic Bruvuno, and that means beam, B-E-A-M. Now we have the second form of bridge. It is a verb, uh, I think it's only transitive, from before the 12th century. One, to make a bridge over or across, as in bridge the gap. Also, to join by a bridge. Number two, to provide with a bridge, and bridgeable is an adjective. Uh, yes, this river over here, it is bridgeable. It's not so large, we can't build a bridge. Uh, next is the third form of bridge, the very last one for this episode. Noun from circa 1897. Any of various card games for usually four players in two partnerships that bid for the right to declare a trump suit, seek to win tricks equal to the final bid, and play with the hand of declarer's partner exposed and played by declarer especially the synonym contract bridge. Um, this is an alternative of the, of the earlier word birich, B-R-I, no, B-I-R-I-T-C-H, and that is of unknown origin. I sort of understand the concept of how to play bridge, but I've never played it, never learned how to do it. Uh, when my family gets together for Christmas or whatever, some of them like to play bridge, uh, and it just has confused me oh so much, so I never learned how to play. We had brick red, brick wall, brick work, brick yard, bricolage, bricolure, bridal, bridal wreath, bride, bridegroom, bride price, bridesmaid, bridewell, and bridge. Uh, which was my favorite? Uh, I think I'm going to pick bricolage as the word of the episode because 
I just like the idea of creating something uh, just by what you have handy. I think that's a great thing that we should do more, more so. Okay, this was a good long episode. Thank you very much for listening. Bearing with me, listening to my stupid descriptions of bridges. Until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast where I am reading the dictionary and commenting on it. The first word is bridgehead. All one word. Noun from 1812. 1A. A fortification protecting the end of a bridge nearest an enemy. 1B. An area around the end of a bridge. Could also, I guess you, you could say bridge tail, right? Why not bridge head, bridge tail? But which one is the beginning? We'll never know. Two, an advanced position seized in hostile territory. I don't know the etymology of that one. Uh, next is bridge loan. Two words, noun from 1975. A short-term loan used to finance an enterprise, investment, or government spending the receipt of other funds. I'm guessing the word bridge um, is used just like uh, at the end of the last episode. You know, it's a it's something to connect two other things. Um, you know, it you're bridging your ability, you're from not having a loan to having money to be able to pay it off. I don't know. I'm making this up at the top of my head. Next is bridge work, one word, noun from 1883, and it just says dental bridges. Uh, the the definition for that one, um, let's see, where was it? The uh, partial denture anchored to adjacent teeth. I'm still, I don't have dentures, I don't have a bridge, so I'm not entirely sure what this is. I don't think I want to post a picture of this one, because some of you might be grossed out. Um, you know, I think it's just a thing to... I don't know, keep the teeth in place, connect the two. Uh, but yeah, sometimes people say, I got some bridge work. Next is bridle, B-R-I-D-L-E. It is the first form noun from before the 12th century. One, the headgear with which a horse is governed and which carries a bit and reins. I think we talked about, oh yes, for bit. I think we talked about that. Uh, number two, a length of line or cable attached to two parts of something to spread the force of a pull, especially rigging on a kite for attaching line. They call that the bridle. Uh, three is uh, the synonyms are curb and restraint, as in set a bridle on his power. Still don't know what that means. Uh, this is from Middle English bridel, from Old English bridel, akin to the Old English bregdon. To, which means to move quickly. And there's more at the word braid. Um, still doesn't really make sense. I mean, why? Uh, what? how does to move quickly connect to the thing that you put on a horse? I'm not entirely sure about that one. If uh, any horse experts out there, let me know. Now we have the second form of bridle. It is a verb from uh, before the 12th century. First is transitive. One, to put a bridle on. Two, to restrain, check, or control with or as if with a bridle, as in, bridle your tongue. Keep it controlled. Intransitive definition says, to show hostility or, oh, you know what, I just made a connection in my head. Uh, the thing about the horse, um, it's not about moving quickly. I mean, maybe it is somewhere, but it's more about the, the word restraint, which was in the number three. Um, and I say that because it's going to come up again. So uh, the intransitive definition for the verb of bridle says to show hostility or resentment as to an affront to one's pride or dignity, especially by drawing back the head and chin. Uh, and then here we have a synonym for the whole thing is the word restrain. So yes, control it, restrain. And we saw restrain before. Uh, that's bridling. Next is bridle path. Two words, noun from 1811, a trail suitable for horseback riding. Uh, seems odd that, wouldn't you just call it a horse path? Why is it a bridle path? Why do you have to use the word bridle to denote that? Next is Brie, capital B-R-I-E, noun from 1835. A soft surface, 
uh, oh, a soft surface ripened cheese with a whitish rind and pale yellow interior, uh, which I think that interior is often soft. Some people bake brie. Uh, this is from a district in France named Brie. So some smart person made it there, probably. Uh, Lord of the Rings, there is a town called Brie, but I think they spell it B-R-E-E. Uh, I'm not... Int- I wonder where why he chose that name. Maybe he liked the district in France named Brie, and so he said, I'm going to use that, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Next is Brief. Uh, first form, adjective, from the 14th century. One... Short in duration, extent, or length. As in, this podcast is not brief. But sometimes the episodes are. 2A, synonym is concise. 2B, synonyms are curt, C-U-R-T, and abrupt. Briefness is a noun. And this is from Middle English, bref or brief. From Anglo-French, bref or brief. From Latin, brevis, which is akin to the Old High German, Merg, M-U-R-G, which means short, uh, and from Greek, brachis. Not sure how merg got in there, but it does uh, mean something similar, so I guess that makes sense. Next is the second form of brief. It is a noun from the 14th century. 1A, an official letter or mandate, especially a papal letter, less formal than a bull. A bull? Is a bull letter a thing? I guess we'll learn that soon, maybe. Uh, 1B, a specific instruction or responsibility, as in his brief was to strengthen the army. He got an official letter or mandate that told him to strengthen the army. Uh, Number 2A, a concise article. 2B, uh, synonyms are synopsis and summary. 2C, a concise statement of a client's case made out for the uh wait what happened here made out for the instruction of counsel in a trial at law number three an outline of an argument especially a formal outline especially in law that sets forth the main contentions with supporting statements or evidence uh yeah number four is plural uh short snug pants or underpants briefs i just love that that comes right after this very, uh, I'll just read the definition. It, the, the short snug pants comes right after an outline of an argument, especially a former outline, especially in law that sets forth the main contentions with supporting statements or evidence. They just couldn't be more different, right? Uh, in brief is a phrase which means in a few words. Briefly is also a synonym for that one. Um, and I think that's good for that. And now we have the last word, which is again brief. It is the third form, B-R-I-E-F. This is a verb, uh, just transitive from the 15th century. One, to make an abstract or abridgment of. So you're making something uh, shorter. 2A, to give final precise instructions to. 2B, to coach thoroughly in advance. I have to tell you the the things. I'm briefing you. Uh, Yeah. Uh, I guess that's similar to making something shorter. You're just giving them the important information. 2C, to give essential information to, like I just said. Number three, uh, to discuss as a military operation in a briefing, as in briefed the mission. Again, we just gave you the short, shorter thing. We don't have to go through all the details. I walked here. I walked there. No, just giving, that, giving you the highlights. A uh, briefer is a noun. I feel like when I see in shows, military shows, police shows, whatever it is, they say, uh, I got to brief you. I f- but I feel like, depending on the situation, it sounds like it's either before a th- thing or it's after a thing. So you can brief somebody on what they're about to do, or you can brief somebody on what just happened. Does that make sense? Can that get a little confusing? I guess you just have to figure that out from context. So we had bridge head, bridge loan, bridge work, bridal, bridal path, brie, and brief. Well, I think I'm going to pick brie as the word of the episode. I don't eat uh, normal cheese. I eat vegan cheese. 
Uh, but when I did eat cheese, I did sort of enjoy brie. Uh, it wasn't one of the uh, the stinky cheeses, which I did not care for. Uh, but I like this one. We would often have this... Um, uh, I mentioned my family getting together playing bridge, and often there would be cheese and crackers, and brie was usually one of them. So maybe somebody could be playing bridge and eating brie all at the same time. Um, you know, we would just have that as a snack. All right, that is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast, one of them. Please go rate and review, especially on Apple Podcasts if you can. Uh, Subscribe, share, share, share. Tell all the people that this podcast exists. If you would like to give me some money, uh, you can go to Patreon and become a patron. You can patronize me there. What? I don't know. Uh, And um, if you you, uh, join at the lowest tier, you will get episodes early, very early. This episode is airing on October 9th, uh, but if you're a patron, you're getting it very early because I'm recording this on September 20th, so, you know, this might actually be up later today. I don't know. Um, So that's that, Uh, and then if you join at a different tier on Patreon, you might get some exclusives. There's already a couple there, and there's more coming. Uh, That is all I got to say. We are at the end of page 154. Let's talk about the words. Briefcase is first. One word, noun from 1917, a flat, flexible case for carrying papers or books. Next is briefing, noun from 1910, an act or instance of giving precise instructions or essential information. Uh, Next we have briefly. Hopefully the briefing is brief and you say it in a briefly way. Uh, This is an adverb from the 14th century, 1A, in a brief way like I think I literally just said, as in, briefly mentioned. 1B, in brief, as in, the food briefly was awful. You you could go into more detail about how awful the food was, but briefly, I'm just going to say, it was awful. I don't really think I've had any terribly awful food. I think I'm not terribly picky. I keep on saying the word terribly, uh, which is another adverb, isn't it? Should be. Uh, but I just like food. Speaking of, I haven't eaten yet today. I need to go do that when I'm done. And number two, for a short time, as in briefly married. I think the record is like five minutes or something. People got married and then they got divorced right away. Next is Briar, B-R-I-E-R. It is a variation of Briar with an A. Next is Brig, B-R-I-G, first form Noun from 1712, a two-masted, square-rigged ship. And this is short for brigantine, which um, we are going to see at the end of the episode. So keep your pants on. Next, we have the second form of brig. It is a noun from 1832. One, a place, as on a ship, for temporary confinement of offenders in the U.S. Navy. And number two, Synonyms are guardhouse and prison. So there could, I guess, be a brig on a brig, a, a, um, like a, a prison on a two-masted square-rigged ship. That's possible. Um, this is, oh yeah, it's actually, it's probably from the first form of, of brig, the first one. So they're definitely related somehow, uh, which is so weird. I think that's interesting. Why did they, I don't know. Uh, Now we have the third form of brig. This is an abbreviation for brigade, which is our next word, and brigadier, which is a couple after that, or one after that. So here we go with brigade. It is the first form, noun, from 1634. 1A, a large body of troops. 1B, a tactical and administrative unit composed of a headquarters, one or more units of infantry or armor, and supporting units. Number two, a group of people organized for special activity. This is a French word, but it is from the Italian word brigata, from brigare, which means to fight. And there is more at the word brigand, which we will also read in this uh, episode. So now we have the second form of brigade. It is a verb from 1781. It's only transitive, only one definition, which says to form or unite into a brigade. 
Next is Brigadier. That was one of the options for the uh, third form of Brig. This is a noun from 1678. One, an officer in the British Army commanding a brigade and ranking immediately below a major general. And then number two, we have the synonym Brigadier General. Uh, So I've never been able to keep those straight. Which one is above which one? Sergeant General. Now I've got Brigadier General and Major General. Uh, Yeah, that's... That's good time. Brigadier. They just shorten it from our next word, which is Brigadier General. Two words, noun from 1690. A commissioned officer in the Army, Air Force, or Marine Corps who ranks above a colonel and whose insignia is one star. Uh, Sorry, you just get one star. Um, So we had a definition for Brigadier General, but we also had a definition for Brigadier, which is a Brigadier General, but I guess in certain cases it's different. Uh... That's helpful. Moving on to Brigadoon, capital B-R-I-G-A-D-O-O-N. It is a noun from 1947. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, no, sorry. That's part of the etymology. It is from 1968. Well, this is going to get interesting. Um, A place that is idyllic, unaffected by time, or remote from reality. This is from... Brigadoon, which is the village in the musical Brigadoon, which is from 1947, which was by A.J. Lerner and F. Lowe. So they wrote the musical called Brigadoon, and then about 20 years later, people actually started using that word uh, to talk about a place that is idyllic, unaffected by time, or remote from reality, which technically doesn't exist, but it is, you know, it's just an idea. Uh, When I was a kid, my mom was part of um, chil- a local children's theater, and uh, they they did Brigadoon, and she was one of the the lead characters. I think I think she was. I was pretty young, so I don't really remember it. Moving on to Brigand, uh, we mentioned this one before somewhere. B r i g a n d. It is a noun from the 14th century. One who lives by plunder, usually as a member of a band. Synonym is bandit. Uh, this is an interesting word. Brigandage is a noun. Brigandage. Maybe that's what they're taking? Uh, the etymology says, let's see, this is from um, Old Italian brigante, which is from brigare, which means to fight, from briga, which means strife, of Celtic origin, akin to the Old Irish brig, which means strength. Next is brigandine, noun from the 15th century medieval body armor of scales and or plates scales or plates um and where did we see that brig so this is brigandine with a d that's what you put on your body but now we have brigantine with a t this is a noun from 1525 this is the the word uh that we were uh uh the first form of brig is short for this one uh, this is a two-masted sh- sailing ship that is square-rigged except for a fore and aft mainsail. So we just got a little bit more information on that one than the previous one. Uh, I still think they're the same. Uh, the etymology we can probably skip. Um, and then we have our very last one for this episode. It is Brig Gen. You can probably figure out what this is. Capital B-R-I-G. Next word capital G-E-N. This is an abbreviation for Brigadier General. All these words were so connected today, it was very interesting. So we had briefcase, briefing, briefly, bri- or, uh, briar, brig, uh, brigade, brigadier, brigadier general, brigadoon, brigand, brigandine, brigantine, and briggen. I think I'm going to pick brigadoon as the word of the episode because... I have a personal connection to it. It's got good music. It's uh, it's the one that was mostly different from all these other ones on its own. And also, it's just it's an idyllic place that's unaffected by time or remote from reality. So who wouldn't want to go there, right? Uh, that is it for this episode. I am going to drink something hot and soothe my voice because I just recorded four. And I'm probably going to record, record four more later today because I got to gotta catch back up. 
thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to this. Uh, I hope I've got some new people. If you are listening to these new episodes and you haven't started at the beginning, uh, please go do that. Even though the quality is crap, uh, you know, this whole thing is a journey. You got to start from there. So this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, Let's see. Our first word is bright. B-R-I-G-H-T. This is an adjective from uh, before the 12th century. 1A. Radiating or reflecting light. Synonyms are shining and sparkling. And uh, as in bright lights, also as in bright eyes. 1B. Synonym is sunny, as in a bright day. Uh, I'm looking out the windows, and it looks like it is a bright day. I probably should have gone out and enjoyed it, but it's like, it's almost 4 o'clock, and I haven't done that. Um, Also, as in bright moments. Number two, synonyms are uh, illustrious and glorious, as in brightest star of the opera. Number three, synonym is beautiful. Four, of high saturation or lightness, as in bright colors. 5A, synonyms are lively and cheerful, as in be bright and jovial among your guests. That is a quote from Shakespeare. Shakespeare always knows how to put the words together great. 5B, synonyms are intelligent and clever, as in a bright idea. Making this podcast was a bright idea. Also is in bright children. Number six, synonyms are auspicious and promising, as in bright prospects for the future. Bright is also an adverb, and interestingly, you can also uh, say brightly. Brightly or bright, those are both adverbs. This is from Old English Bjort, akin to the Old High German berat, which means bright, from the Sanskrit... Um, Brajate, B-H-R-A-J-A-T-E. No idea how to pronounce that, but that means it shines. Uh, Now we have the second form of bright. It is a noun from 1969, a bright color, and that is usually used in plural as in rich earth tones and crisp brights. That is a quote from Patricia Peterson. pa 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 Next is brighten, verb from the 14th century. First is intransitive, to become bright or brighter. And then transitive says to make bright or brighter, as in you brightened my day. Uh, Brightener is a noun. That is the one who was doing the brightening. Uh, All right, now we have bright line, two words with a hyphen adjective from 1982 providing an unambiguous criterion or guideline, especially in law, as in a bright line distinction. I have not heard of this before because I don't know anything about the law, uh, providing an unambiguous criterion or guideline. So it's something that you're making it very clear. It's one way or the other, I guess. The line is very bright. That's probably what they were thinking. Next, we have brightness. Noun from before the 12th century. 1A, the quality or state of being bright. Also, an instance of such a quality or state. 1B, synonym is luminance. Number two, the attribute, no, the attribute of light source colors, light source colors, yep, by which emitted light is ordered continuously from the light to dark in correlation with its intensity. Uh, not entirely sure what I just read there, but it says compare to the 2C definition for the word hue, H-U-E, also the number two definition for the first form of lightness, and also the number four definition for saturation. Um, I deal with color correction a little bit in my day-to-day job, either with uh, videography or photography, and these, all these words go hand in hand. Uh, the hue, the saturation, the brightness, or the luminance. Uh, you know, I, I'm definitely not an expert, but I have learned a lot in the last decade or so. Um, and, it's, and it's interesting to see how they all come together. I s- think I saw that somebody made a book of basically every single color. Each page was... Um, how do I even describe this? I think it was... 
uh, every shade of like a color with its lightness and darkness, but then you flip the page and then it was a slightly different hue of the color when all, with all of its different shades of you know, light to dark. And then it was just this massive book of all the different shades. Uh, I don't even know if I'm describing this correctly, but uh, maybe I'll see if I can find a picture of that book. Um, yeah, the brightness and lightness and hue and saturation. Good times. Some of you can't see all the colors. Sorry, uh, but maybe you can get those sunglasses that help you out. Next is Bright's Disease. Bright's is capital B uh, and then an apostrophe S. This is a noun from 1831. Any of several kidney diseases marked especially by albumin in the urine. Sounds like something you don't want. This is from Richard Bright, who was an English physician who died in 1858. Uh, and so he probably figured out uh, the science behind uh, what's going on with this disease. Next, we have bright work, all one word, noun from 1841. One, polished or plated metalwork. Two, varnished woodwork on a boat. So it could be woodwork or metalwork, but it's bright work either way. Next, we have Brill, B-R-I-L-L. This is a noun from the 15th century. A European flat fish. Um, well, that's technically the end of the definition, but also broadly, it has the synonym turbot, T-U-R-B-O-T. Uh, I guess that could also potentially be just be pronounced turbo. Maybe it's French and you don't say the T. No clue. Uh, the Let's see, we got some scientific names here. Scophthalmus, scophthalmus rhombus, also Bothus rhombus, and those are of the family Bothidae or Bothidae. It's just a European flatfish, a brill. Next is brilliance, noun from 1755, the quality or state of being brilliant. Uh, no comment. Next is brilliancy. Noun from 1747, number one, the synonym is brilliance, and number two, an instance of brilliance. Making this podcast was an instance of brilliance. All right, now we have the word brilliant, first form, adjective from uh, 1696. One, very bright, synonym is glittering, as in a brilliant light. Two A, Synonyms are striking and distinctive, as in a brilliant example. To be distinguished by unusual mental keenness or alertness. Number three is brilliant, uh, and it just means very good. Synonym is excellent. It says to see uh, as a synonym just the word bright, which we read at the very, very beginning of this episode, and brilliantly is an adverb. Um, let's see. There are some pictures, and I think they have to do with this one. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. That, that's the next one. The etymology is uh, its a French word, brilliant. They probably say brillant. Uh, that is from the uh, verb brillare, which means to shine. And then from the Italian word brillare. Uh, it doesn't say what it means, but I'm guessing it means to shine. Shine bright like a diamond. Speaking of diamonds... We have the second form of brilliant. It is a noun from uh, 1690. A gem, as a diamond, cut in a particular form with numerous facets so as to have special brilliance. We have two pictures of a diamond. There is the top view and a side view. So, uh, let's see, on the top view, we have number one, it is called the table. So if you just think of a standard diamond that's round, I don't know the official name of that. Is it round cut, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but the very top face of it is larger than the other ones, and that is called the table. Uh, then we have, uh, looking at the side view, um, the, uh, it's that first sort of angled piece that comes down uh, from that top flat table. Uh, that, that angled part that goes down, that is called the bezel, B-E-Z-E-L. Uh, and then below, uh, so then uh, at that point, we have number three, the girdle. That is the part that is the widest part of this circle, uh, circular diamond. Uh, and that's kind of funny to me because when you think of a girdle, you think of you're wearing a girdle, somebody wearing a girdle, and that usually makes... Uh, m you know, brings in your your 
uh, I guess, belly area. I don't know. It tightens everything in, so it makes it smaller. Um, but in this case, the girdle is actually the widest part of the whole thing. I'm not sure what the, uh, the reason for that is, but that's just what I noticed. And then, um, after the girdle, it all comes to a point. And so this next section where it's all coming in, it angles back in towards the center. This is called the pavilion. That's number four, the pavilion. And then at the very, very bottom, we have the point. It might be slightly flattened. It's hard to tell, but it's uh, on the underside of the diamond. And that is called the, well, there's a couple of ways to pronounce this. Is it a coulette, a coulet, a cullet? C-U-L-E-T. That's what that is. Uh, let's see. And then we have one more word for this episode. It is brilliantine. B-R-I-L-L-I-A-N-T-I-N-E. Noun from 1873. One, a light, lustrous fabric that is similar to alpaca and is woven usually with a cotton warp and mohair or worsted filling. Number two, a preparation for making hair glossy. Uh, it's, yes, yeah, it's just a way to make your make the hair uh, shiny and brilliant. That is brilliantine. So we had bright, brighten, bright line, brightness, bright's disease, bright work, brill, uh, which was the fish, brilliance, brilliancy, brilliant, and brilliantine. Uh, well, I what did uh, I think? Let's see, what, what, which one jumps out at me? Um, I will pick bright work as the word of the episode. Uh, because, I don't know, let's see if we can find a picture of something that's bright work. That is the end of this episode. Thank you very, very much for tuning in and listening and subscribing and telling everybody about this. And until next time, this is, has been, Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello. You know who you are. You're the word nerds. You're the best. Best people in the world, nerd. The first word for this episode is brim. B-R-I-M. First form. Noun from the 13th century. 1A1. An upper or outer margin. Synonym is verge. 1A2 is archaic. The upper surface of a body of water. Uh, 1B. The edge or rim of a hollow vessel, a natural depression, or a cavity. The, I don't have a glass next to me, but if I did, there would be a brim around the glass. Number two, the projecting rim of a hat. Uh, it's, it's a rim and a brim. Which is it? Pick one. Brimless is an adjective. So it's a hat with no rim or brim. Mm, let's see, this is from the Middle High German Brem, B-R-E-M, which means edge. Uh, so that's that. Second form of brim is a verb from 1598. First is transitive, to fill to the brim. Seems like a weird verb. Uh, I'm, I'm brimming this glass of water. Uh, now we have intransitive. One, to be or become full, often to overflowing, as in eyes brimming with tears. Uh, also, nose brimming with snot. Two, to reach or overflow a brim. Next is brimful, adjective from circa 1530. Full to the brim, ready to overflow. Again, it can be water in a glass, it's, it's a, a brim full of water. Your eyes can be full of tears, so you've got a brim full of tears, or you could have a brim full of snot in your nose. Next is brimmed, B-R-I-M-M-E-D, adjective from 1606, having a brim of a specified nature, and that is used in combination, as in a wide-brimmed hat. I don't look good in hats. I don't have any of these. Next is brimmer. Noun from 1650, a brimming cup or glass. Next is brimstone. Noun from the 12th century, and we just have the synonym sulfur, S-U-L-F-U-R. It's a, a I don't know, is it, what'd you call it? A chemical, an element, a molecule. It's something that smells. This is from Middle English brimstone with no E, 
probably from birnin, which means to burn, and stone, S-T-O-N, which means stone. So uh, like a burning stone. Maybe uh, when this was uh, invented, when this word was made up, um, the uh, there were some rocks or stones that burned and, and made this sulfur smell. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Next is brinded adjective from the 15th century. It is archaic, and we have the synonym, synonym brindled, B-R-I-N-D-L-E-D, uh, which is coming up because our next word is brindle, and the one after that is brindled. Sorry, my eye is a little itchy, so let's fix that before we move on. So we have now brindle, noun from 1696. One, a brindled color. Well, what is a brindled color? Well, maybe we'll learn in the next word. And then number two, a brindled animal. Again, what is brindled? How can a color and an animal both be brindled? Let's find out. Brindled is, uh, oh, it could also just be brindle with no D. It is an adjective of uh, from 1620. Having obscure dark streaks or flecks on a usually gray or tawny ground, as in a brindled cow. So that is how you can have a brindled animal. It has those colors. And then a brindled color has those colors. See, it was obvious. Next is brine, B-R-I-N-E, first form, noun from before the 12th century. 1A, water saturated or strongly impregnated with common salt. Uh, I, yeah, th- I think they would um, put stuff in brine to keep it, uh, pr- uh, to preserve it. Uh, 1B, a strong saline solution as of calcium chloride. 2, the water of a sea or salt lake. That is good for that. Second form of brine is, uh, it's a verb from 1552. It is transitive to treat as by steeping with brine. So to treat with brine, uh, and you can uh, steep in it. Like, like, like you, wouldn't, you wouldn't steep your tea in brine, but that's uh, usually where I he- hear the word steeping. It's with tea. Uh, and then briner is a noun. Next is Brinell Hardness, B-R-I-N-E-L-L. That's a capital B, actually. Two words, noun from 1915. The hardness of a metal or alloy measured by hydraulically pressing a hard ball under a standard load into the specimen. And they do that to figure out how hard it is. This is from Johann A. Brinell. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, who was a Swedish engineer who died in 1925. So he was the one who figured this out, uh, how to do this, and and created this standard of Brunel hardness, uh, which is the Brunel hardness number. That's our next word, or words, noun from 1915. A number expressing Brunel hardness and denoting the load applied in testing in kilograms divided by the spherical area of indentation produced in the specimen in square millimeters, called also Brunel number, uh, which we are not going to read here because it's the same thing. Uh, So it's how much pressure is put onto the uh, metal or alloy um, and uh, based on how, I guess it's how deep the sphere goes in millimeters. Next we have brine shrimp, two words, noun from 1836, any of a genus of brachiopod crustaceans that can exist in strongly saline environments. So we just learned about brine. It's uh, basically water with a lot of salt. Uh, so these are shrimp that live in this, which, you know, most most creatures you'd think can't live in um, uh, water with so much salt in it, but uh, these guys can. By the way, if you're uh, a young kid listening, do not drink salt water like the ocean um, you know, if I, I, please go ask your parents or research the, how much salt can be in a water in in water that's safe to drink. Um, I think I remember getting like um, I don't know if it was a cold sore or something, but you you'd gargle with salt water to help heal something up, but you don't want to swallow it because you, it freaks out your body and you can get really sick and possibly die. So don't drink salt water. But the shrimp, they're fine. Uh, the genus name for this is uh, Artemia. Artemia. Just the once. I said it twice. It's just once. 
And here we go with our last word. There's got a bunch of definitions for it. It is the word bring, B-R-I-N-G. This is a verb from before the 12th century. We are starting with transitive, 1A, to convey, lead, carry, or cause to come along with along with one toward the place from which the action is being regarded. Wow, that was highly confusing. Uh, okay, uh, 1B, to cause to be, act, or move in a special way, as 1B1, the synonym attract, as in her screams brought the neighbors. And of course, brought is the past tense form of the word bring. Uh, then we have 1B2, synonyms are persuade and induce. 1B3, synonyms are force and compel. Uh, that was 1B3, I think. Now we have 1B4, to cause to come into a particular state or condition, as in bring water to a boil. And I have a little scratchy thing in my throat, so let me cough that out. One second. <coughs> That was going to get super irritating. Uh, Next is 1C. This is a a dialect form. It doesn't say where. Synonyms are escort and accompany. 1D, to to bear as an attribute or characteristic, as in brings years of experience to the position. Number two, to cause to exist or occur, as 2A, to be the occasion of, as in winter brings snow. Oftentimes, but not always. Uh, To be, to result in, as in the drug brought immediate relief. Well, that's very nice. To see, a synonym is institute, as in bring legal action. To D, synonym is adduce, A-D-D-U-C-E, adduce, as in bring an argument. Number three, synonym is prefer, as in bring charges. Uh, Okay. Number four, to procure in exchange. Also, sell for. We have one intransitive definition, which is chiefly Midland, and the synonyms are yield and produce. And then we have, let's see, bringer is a noun. And then we have some phrases, bunch of phrases. Uh, Bring forth. Number one, synonym is bear, as in brought forth fruit, brought forth fruit. Number two, to give birth to, synonym is produce. Number three, synonym again is adduce, as in bring forth persuasive arguments. Next phrase is bring forward. Number one, to produce to view, synonym is introduce, as in brought new evidence forward. Uh, so, the, uh, it was bring forward was the phrase, and then they put a couple words in the middle of those words. Uh, number two, to carry, uh, to carry a total, or no, actually, it's just to carry forward, and then an example is a total. So, to carry a total forward. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but we are going to move on to the next phrase. Bring home, to make unmistakably ke- clear. Bring home the argument, uh, make it clear. Bring to account is our next phrase. Number one, to bring to book. Number two, synonym is reprimand. Next is bring to bear. That's our next phrase. To use with effect, as in bring pressure to bear. Next phrase, I told you there was a lot of phrases. Bring to book, uh, which is funny because one of the definitions of a previous phrase was to bring to book. So this one means to compel to give an account. Next phrase, bring to light. Synonyms are disclose and reveal. Next phrase is bring to mind. Synonym is recall. It's kind of like remember. Next phrase, bring to terms. Uh, And the uh, definition says to compel, to agree, assent, or submit. And our last phrase is bring up the rear. Uh, And that means to come last or behind. So we had brim, brimful, brimmed, brimmer, brimstone, brinded, brindle, brindled, brine, brinell hardness, brinell hardness number, brine shrimp, and bring. I am going to pick brinell hardness number because it is very scientific and it is a standard, which is great. 
uh, that, you know, I think we should use more of those around the world. And that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast where it's about the dictionary and words and definitions and language and good stuff. So we have our first word is bring about. Uh, Half of this uh, episode is going to be basically putting a short word after the word bring. Uh, You'll see what I mean shortly. So bring about is first. It's two words. Transitive verb from the 14th century. To cause to take place. And a synonym is effect. Uh, Like bring about change. That's my own example. Next is bring around. Two words. It's not ring around, like you say, ring around the collar, or there's a ring around the tub after you go play in the mud, and then you take a bath, and there's a ring around the tub that your parents have to clean. Uh, No, this is bring around. This is a transitive verb from 1862. One, to restore to consciousness. Synonym is revive. Number two, synonym is persuade. Next is bring down, all one word, Noun from circa 1944, and the synonyms are come down and let down. We'll learn more about those later. But now we have bring down again. It is two words. Verb from the 14th century, just transitive. One, to cause to fall by or as if by shooting. Uh, so if somebody's hunting and they hit a deer and it falls down, they, they've said, I, I, I'm bringing down that deer. That's not really how they'd say that, but you get the idea. Uh, Number two, to carry forward. And then the example is a total. And we had that weird definition uh, during the word bring. uh, Where is it? Here it is. Uh, It's the the phrase uh, bring forward, Uh, not bring down. It's bring forward. And they had the same same definition, which is still weird to me. Uh, let's see. We don't have that one there. Okay. So we have some, a couple, no, we have one phrase for bring down. It is bring down the house or bring the house down. And that means to win the enthusiastic approval of the audience. They they love them so much. They brought the house down. Uh, next is bring in verb, uh, transitive verb from the 14th century. One, Synonyms are include and introduce. Two, to produce as profit or return, as in each sale brought in $5. What are they selling that's only $5? That's a good deal. Number three, to enable to reach home plate by hitting the ball. You've got to, you hit the ball and you maybe you get a base and, uh, oh, because the example is a base runner. Uh, So, yeah, you've got to bring in your team player to to home plate. Number four, to report to a court, as in the jury brought in a verdict. 5A, to cause, as an oil well, to be productive. 5B, to win tricks with the cards of in bridge. And then the example is a long suit. Uh, So that, yeah, that's talking about bridge. I talked about that before. Don't know how to play. And then number six, the synonym is earn, E-A-R-N, as in brings in a good salary. All right, next is bring off, two words, transitive verb from 1606. One, to cause to escape, synonym is rescue. Two, to carry to a successful conclusion, synonyms are achieve and accomplish. Next is bring on, so we had bring off, now we have bring on. Transitive verb from 1592, to cause, to appear, or occur. Next is bring out. Did we have, yeah, we had bring in, so this is bring out. Transitive verb from 1579, 1A, to make apparent. 1B, to effectively develop as a quality. Number 2A, to present to the public. 2B, to introduce formerly to society. And number three, the synonym is utter. U-T-T-E-R. Now we have bring to. Two words. The transitive verb from 1720. One, to cause a boat. That's in parentheses. To lie to or come to a standstill. Number two, to restore to consciousness. 
Synonym is revive. I don't think I've ever really driven a boat. I think once I uh, maybe somebody let me steer a little bit or something, but uh, I've definitely never brought it into a dock to uh, bring it to a dock to a standstill. Next is bring up. Yes, we had bring down. This is bring up. Tra uh, verb from the 14th century. First is transitive. One, to bring a person to maturity through nurturing care and education. Two, to cause to stop suddenly. Number three, to bring to attention. Synonym is introduce. Four, it's a good one. The synonym is vomit. You, gotta, you bring it up from down. And then the intransitive definition just says to stop suddenly. I I'm trying to think of a context of that one. Bring up? I don't know. That one seems weird to me. Uh, okay, we are done with the bring words. Now we are on brink, B-R-I-N-K, noun from the 13th century. One, the synonym is edge, E-D-G-E, -E, especially the edge at the top of a steep place. Here on the, the brink of a canyon or something. Uh, number two, a bank, especially of a river. Three, the point of onset. Synonym is verge, as in on the brink of war. Number four, the threshold of danger. Yeah, basically it's just you're, you're on the edge of something. It might go one way, it might go the other way. You don't really know it's, what's going to happen. It's the brink. So this is Middle English. It is of Scandinavian origin, akin to the Old Norse breka, which means slope. And it is akin to the Middle Dutch word brink, spelled the same way, which means grassland. Next is brinkmanship. Could also be brinksmanship, all one word. It is a noun from 1956. The art or practice of pushing a dangerous situation or confrontation to the limit of safety, especially to force a desired outcome. Brinksmanship. Next is briny. Adjective from 1581. It seems like this could have easily just been mentioned as an adjective for the word brine, but, uh, you know, they gave it its own thing. This is of relating to or resembling brine or the sea, and a synonym is salty. Brininess is a noun. So if you are eating or drinking something that's salty, you can say it's briny, but yeah. Or sea, sea if it like, like a seafoody or something, you could call that briny as well. Next is Brio, B-R-I-O. I think, weren't there uh, toys called Brio, like kind of like Legos, but but bigger? I think so. Uh, noun from 1734, enthusiastic vigor. Synonyms are vivacity or vivacity, vi vivacity, I think, and verve. Uh, and this is an Italian word. And I guess it just means enthusiastic vigor. I, I have such brio for this dictionary. Next is brioche uh, or just brioche, B-R-I-O-C-H-E. This is a noun from 1826. Light, slightly, that's weird to say, light, slightly sweetbread made with a rich yeast dough. This is from uh, a French word, briere, which means to knead, K-N-E-A-D, uh, like kneading bread. It is of Germanic origin, akin to the Old High German brehan, which means to break. And there's more at the word break. Um, I don't think I had ever had brioche until we were in uh, New Orleans for a wedding, and the day we left, we heard of this place that had uh, uh, vegan brioche. It was all in an all-vegan place, you know, breads and sandwiches and muffins and stuff like that, and they had brioche, and it was very, very good. They had different flavors. I follow them on, I follow them on Instagram, and I always like their posts because it, they just have beautiful, uh, tasty food. Uh, all right, next is briolette, B-R-I-O-L-E-T-T-E. -E. This is a noun from 1865, an oval or pear-shaped gemstone cut in triangular facets, briolette. And if we go back a couple of episodes, we can probably say that uh, one of those sides is called the table, and the whole other section is called the bezel, and another section is called the girdle, and then the pavilion and the coulette, coulet, cut, color, colette, I don't know. 
Next is Briquette. B-R-I-Q-U-E-T-T-E. You could also chop off the last T-E. Briquette. This is um, a noun from 1883. A compacted, often brick-shaped mass of usually fine material, as in a charcoal briquette. Uh, briquette is also a transitive verb. I guess that would be the action of putting the uh, the mass into a brick shape, maybe? Uh, let's see. It's French. Briquette. Uh, brick. Just means brick, really. And our last word is bris. B-R-I-S. Could also be spelled with two S's. Uh, this is a noun from circa 1934. The Jewish rite of circumcision. I'm sure a lot of you already knew that, but maybe a lot of you did not know that. Uh, I guess, well, I'll just read the etymology first. Uh, This is a Yiddish word, bris. It is short for um, brismil or brismile, something like that, uh, which is from the Hebrew berith milah. Again, don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, That literally means covenant of circumcision. Uh, I didn't know bris was short for something, brismile. Uh, if you do not know what circumcision is, you can go talk to somebody, you can go look it up, or you can just wait about a year until I get to that word here. Um, but it is a thing in the uh, Jewish religion that uh, happens to the males. So we had bring about, bring around, bring down, bring down, bring in, bring off, bring on, bring out, bring to, bring up, brink, brinkmanship, briny, brio, brioche, briolette, briquette, and bris. Um, well, I was very tempted to pick, uh, which one was it? Now I don't, I, I was very tempted to pick brioche, but I think I'm going to pick brio, enthusiastic vigor. I'm going to pick that one as the word of the episode. So that is it for this. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. This is the eighth episode I have recorded today. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. We are uh, at the end of page 155, uh, so that's a that's a thing. The first word is brisk, B-R-I-S-K. That's brisk, baby. Uh, first form, adjective from 1560. One, keenly alert. Synonym is lively. 2A, pleasingly tangy, as in brisk tea. I bet they got paid for that one. Uh, 2B, synonyms are fresh and invigorating, as in brisk weather. It's always good to go for a walk or a jog in brisk weather, because you're going to warm up a bit anyway. And then the cool air feels good. Number three, sharp in tone or manner. 4A, synonyms are energetic and quick, as in a brisk pace. You can have a brisk walk in brisk weather uh, while drinking brisk tea. Uh, 4B, marked by much activity, as in business was brisk. Briskly is an adverb, and briskness is a noun. Next is the second form of brisk. It is a verb from 1598. Transitive definition says to make brisk. Intransitive says to become brisk. See, that's that's a great example of the difference between intransitive and transitive. To make brisk to become brisk. Uh, And this is usually used with the word up, as in business brisked up. That seems like a very weird uh, example. Next, we have brisket. Noun from the 14th century. The breast or lower chest of a quadruped animal. Also, a cut of beef from the brisket. And then it says to see the beef illustration, which uh, I think I read briefly. I can't remember. Uh, Let's see. This is from Middle English brusket, akin to the Old English briost, which means breast. Uh, I think it's interesting, though, that some animals, like, well, in this case, quadrupeds, uh, it's called the brisket, but in, like, in birds, ducks, and chickens, it's just called the breast. So why, uh, what's the difference there? Why does it matter about the animal? Uh... Next is bristling or brizzling, B-R-I-S-L-I-N-G, noun from circa 1868. We have the 1A definition for the word sprat, 
S P R A T. Like Jack Sprat? Bristling, I don't know. We'll get there later. This is from Norwegian, bristling, from Lower German, Bretling, from the word Brett, which means broad. It is akin to the Old English Brad, which means broad. All right, that's what they say. Next is bristle, B R I S T L E. First form, noun from the 14th century. A short, stiff, coarse hair or filament. Bristle like is an adjective. Uh, I guess they could have also said bristly. This is, let's see, is there anything interesting? I think we're, oh, let's see. This is from um, the Latin, eventually we get to the Latin word fastigium, which means top. So I'm not sure how that came about. Uh, next is the second form of bristle. It is a verb from the 15th century. First is transitive. One, to furnish with bristles. Two, to make bristly. Ah, see, there's that word bristly. And a synonym is ruffle, R-U-F-F-L-E. Now we have the intransitive definitions, 1A. To rise and stand stiffly erect, as in quills bristling. That's probably about a porcupine. Uh, 1B. To raise the bristles, as in anger. 2. To make an... To, oh, no, sorry. To take on an aggressively defensive attitude, as in response to a slight or criticism, as in he bristled at the accusations of corruption. 3A. To be full of or covered with especially something suggestive of bristles, as in roofs bristled with chimneys. 3B. To be full of something specified, as in book brills, no, book bristles with detail and irony. And that is a quote from W.J. Broad. Um, Broad, where did I see that? Is it in the etymology somewhere? Uh, that was earlier, I think. Okay. Moving on to bristle cone pine. Two words, noun from uh, 1893. Either of two pines of the western U.S. that include the oldest living trees, called also just bristle cone. The scientific names, there's two of them, uh, Pinus longaiva, and then also Pinus, or would it be Pinus? I'm not sure, probably Pinus. Uh, Pinus aristata. Pinus aristata. Next is bristle tail, one word, noun from 1706. Any of various primitive wingless insects, with three slender caudal bristles. Uh, not sure what caudal means, but it is spelled C-A-U-D-A-L. And then I guess maybe the bristles are just little hairs on them or something. The order name is Thysanura. Thys, thys, thysanura. And then the... Um, I can't remember what this S-Y-N stands for. It's not synonym. It's... Not the scientific name. Anyway, it is the word archaeognatha. Archaeognatha, something like that. All right, next is bristly. Ah, here's bristly. Adjective from 1589. 1A, thickly set with bristles, as in a bristly shrub. 1B, consisting of or resembling bristles, as in a bristly mustache. Uh, 2, inclined to or showing aggressiveness or anger, as in a bristly temperament. Next is bristol board. Two words, bristol is spelled B-R-I-S-T-O-L. This is a noun from 1809. A cardboard with a smooth surface, suitable especially for artwork. And it is called also just bristol. This is from Bristol, England. I think the company Ardman Animations is in Bristol, England, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're the ones who make Wallace and Gromit and, uh, you know, all those other good movies. Next is Bristol Fashion. Two words. Bristol, uh, the, the B is capitalized in this one. This is an adjective from 1803. Being in good order. And a synonym is ship shape. This is also from Bristol, England. So not only do they have good cardboard for artwork, but they also must be in very good order. Next is Brit, B-R-I-T. You could also have a second T. This is a noun from 1851. Minute marine animals on which right whales feed. Right whales? 
R I yeah R I G H T on which right whales? I've never heard of a right whale. Uh, the examples of these uh, little marine animals are crustaceans and pteropods. This is perhaps from corn. What's corn? Is that a a link? Corn? Is it in here? Yes, Cornish. That's the language language called Cornish. Uh, it is um, per- perhaps from the Cornish word brithel, which means mackerel. Although I don't think a mackerel is a minute marine animal. Next is Brit again, capital B-R-I-T. First form of this one, noun from 1898. And we have the number two definition for the word Briton, B-R-I-T-O-N. Or is it just Britain? I think that's somebody from Britain. Uh, second form of Brit is an abbreviation for Britain or British. Next is Britannia Metal, capital B-R-I-T-A-N-N-I-A, and then the second word is a metal. Noun from 1817, a silver-white alloy largely of tin, antimony, and copper that is similar to pewter. This is from Britannia, which is a poetic name for Great Britain. Next is Britannic, with a capital B, adjective from 1641, and we have the synonym British. And then our last word is britches, B-R-I-T-C-H-E-S. It is a noun from 1571, and we have the synonyms breeches, which we read before, and in the pronunciation guide it also said britches, and then also the synonym trousers. Uh, this is just an alternative of breeches. So we had brisk, brisket, bristling. Uh, what was that? That was, oh, sprat. I don't know what that is. Uh, bristle, bristle cone pine, bristle tail, uh, bristly, bristol board, bristol fashion, Brit, 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 Britannia metal, Britannic, and breeches. I think that I will pick, um, yeah, I guess I'll just pick, uh, bristling as the word of the episode because, I don't know what it is still. That's all I got to say. This was the end of page 155. Uh, As I say often, please rate and review. I really do mean it. Uh, Please go share this with other people. Uh, More, maybe just as importantly, subscribe. Send me a message. Call my Google voice number. Leave me a message. Maybe I'll play it in an episode. Uh, Yeah, that's it. Go, uh, go, Go be good. Go help somebody. Uh, do do something. Just go be happy. Uh, don't be mean. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Are you ready for what is going to hit you? Uh, okay, so we're at the top of page 156, and uh, I this has happened um, a few times before, and I assume it's going to happen many times through the rest of the book. At the top of the page, it says the first word of the page and the last word of the page, and again, one of them is incorrect. It says the first word is brith mila, b r i t h m i l a. That's what it says at the very, very top of the page. But that is not the first word. Um, I went back to the end of the last page, and it ends with britches, which is spelled b r i t c. But then the first word of this episode is Briticism, B-R-I-T-I-C-I-S-M. So Brithmala is not in there, but in like six words, we are going to have Britmala, which is also Brithmala with a T-H, but it's not the first word of the page. I really don't understand why this is happening. Did, did the editor of the book just miss this? I mean, yes, it's like over a thousand pages to look through. It's almost, it's like 1,500 plus pages. But, I mean, what I I hope they fix this in the next version. All right, I'm, I'm going to try and stop complaining about these things, but I am going to mention them when they come up going forward. Okay, so, like I said, the first word is Briticism with a capital B, B-R-I-T-I-C-I-S-M, noun from 1868, a characteristic feature of British English. Next is British capital B, noun from the 13th century, 1A, the Celtic language of the ancient Britons, 1B, the synonym is British English, number two, 
is uh, the people of Great Britain or the Commonwealth of Nations. I think there's a sneeze in my future. And maybe it's going away. It'll come back. Oh, yep. No. Okay. Uh, British is also an adjective. Adjective. Britishism. Britishism. That's an interesting word. Uh, That is a noun. And Britishness is also a noun. So this is from Middle English uh, Brutish, which means of Britain, from Old English Bretisk, uh, which is from Bretas, which means Britons. It is of Celtic origin, akin to the W. What's the W? It's probably Welsh, right? Uh, Yes, Welsh in this case. Uh, From the Welsh word Brithon, which means Britain or Briton. Next is British English. Two words. The first letters are capitalized. Noun from 1866. The native language of most inhabitants of England, especially English characteristic of England, English characteristic of England, and clearly distinguishable from that used elsewhere, as in the U.S. or Australia. Uh, yes, you know, we, we see these British English words periodically throughout this book, and... Um, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, next is Britisher. British with an E-R. Noun from 1829. And we just have the number two definition for the word Briton. B-R-I-T-O-N. Although I think you just say Britain. Uh, and yeah, I guess we haven't come up to that one yet. Uh, that's coming up in a couple words. Okay. Next is British Thermal Unit. Three words Noun from 1876. The quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit at a specified temperature as 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Why is it a British thermal unit, though? Uh, Was it was this standard created in Britain? Probably. Um, Also, they use uh, Celsius, I think. Yes, definitely. Uh, So I I wonder why the example is in Fahrenheit. Anyway, um, next is, uh, here we go. This is the one that I was complaining about before. Brit Mila or Brith Mila, uh, capital B-R-I-T, second word, capital M-I-L-A-H. This is a noun from circa 1902, and we have the synonym Bris, B-R-I-S, which uh, we talked about recently this is a Hebrew word, let's see, berith milah, which literally means covenant of circumcision. Yes, okay. Next is Briton, or I think it's just Britain, capital B-R-I-T-O-N, noun from the 13th century. One, a member of one of the peoples inhabiting Britain prior to the Anglo-Saxon invasions. Two, a native or subject of Great Britain, especially the synonym Englishman. And next is Brittany, capital B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y, noun from 1967, any of a breed of medium-sized pointers of French origin that resemble the Spaniels in appearance, uh, called also Brittany Spaniel. Uh, This is from the region in France called Brittany. So that's where they made those dogs. Next is brittle. B-R-I-T-T-L-E. First form. Adjective from the 14th century. 1A. Easily broken, cracked, or snapped. As in brittle clay. Also as in brittle glass. 1B. Easily disrupted, overthrown, or damaged. A synonym is frail as in a brittle friendship. 2a, synonyms are perishable and mortal. 2b, synonyms are transistory and evanescent. It's like, it's very uh, wishy-washy, evanescent. I don't know, I can't think of other words. Uh, Number three, easily hurt or offended. Synonym is sensitive, as in a brittle personality. 4 The synonym is sharp, as in the brittle hurt or... Did I skip a line? No. Uh, Yes. The brittle staccato of snare drums. Sharp. Uh, That seems like a weird way to use that word. I don't think I've ever heard that. Brittle? Sharp? Okay. If you say so. 
Five, lacking warmth, depth, or generosity of spirit. Synonym is cold, as in a a brittle, selfish person. Six, affected with or being a form of type 1 diabetes characterized by large and unpredictable fluctuations in blood glucose level. Um, And then a synonym for everything is the word fragile. Brittle is an adverb, and brittleness is a noun. And this is from Middle English, brittle, akin to the Old English brioton, which means to break, uh, from Old Norse brijota, B-R-J-O-T-A. Next, we have the second form of brittle. It is a noun from 1913. A candy made with caramelized sugar and nuts spread in thin sheets, as in peanut brittle. Mm, Yes, it's very easily broken. It's kind of a weird name for a candy, though. Peanut brittle, when you really think about it. Uh, Okay, next is brittle bush. One word, noun from 1903. Any of a genus of composite plants having brittle stems, especially a perennial desert shrub of the southwestern U.S. and adjacent Mexico with yellow flowers blooming above dense, usually grayish-green foliage. The genus name is Encelia, and the scientific name for the uh, perennial desert shrub is Encelia farinosa. Next is brittle star, two words, noun from 1843. Any of a class or subclass of echidnoderms that have slender, flexible arms distinct from the central disc. Uh... I don't. I have to find a picture. I need to learn more about this. Echinoderms, echinoderms. Yes, it goes on to the second line. So I wanted to make sure I was reading it correctly. Um, and the uh, the class or the subclass is Euphioridea. You, no, Ophiuride. Seriously, this is a word that people can say. O p h i u r o i d e a. Ophioroidea. Okay. That one really pissed me off. Uh, Next is Britonic. Capital B-R-I-T-T-O-N-I-C. It's like a tonic, a drink with tonic water, but it's made in Britain. This is an adjective from 1923, and we have the synonym Brythonic. B-R-Y-T-H-O-N-I-C. Brythonic. Next is BRICS, capital B-R-I-X, adjective from 1897, of or relating to a BRICS scale, which is next. It is a noun from 1897, a hydrometer scale for sugar sugar solutions so graduated that its reading at a specified temperature represent percentages by weight of sugar in the solution called also Bricks. Uh, This is from Adolf F. Bricks, who was an Austrian scientist and died in 1870. Huh, but the thing, the scale, wasn't coined until 27 years after he died? So he made the scale, but then later they were like, hey, you know what, that thing that he made, we should probably name it after him, because it was smart. Uh, Still don't really understand, but it's, you know, some sort of standard thing about sugars and such. And our last word for this episode is BRL. It is an abbreviation for barrel. So we had Britishism, British, British English, Britisher, British Thermal Unit, Brit Mela, Britain, Brittany, Brittle, Brittle Bush, Brittle Star, Britonic, Bricks, Brick Scale, and BRL. Uh, I think I will pick Brittle Star as the word of the episode because I'm curious to see what this one actually is. And maybe I can figure out how to actually pronounce that uh, class name. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Um, Okay, first word for this episode is bro, B-R-O, noun from 1838. One, we have the number one definition for the word brother, which is... Ah, it's like 
a bunch of episodes from now. Um, okay, where were we? Number two, synonym is soul brother, often used informally as a term of address. Soul brother. Uh, next is brooch, first form noun from the 13th century. One, we have the synonym, well, is it pronounced brooch or is it pronounced brooch? It's B-R-O-O-C-H. Um, this word that we're talking about now is B-R-O-A-C-H. Uh, but I think B, I think the one with two O's is also pronounced brooch. Just spelled weird. Number two, any of various pointed or tapered tools, implements, or parts. As 2A, a spit for roasting meat. Uh, 2B, a tool for tapping casks. This is a very versatile word. Uh, 2C, a cutting tool for removing material from metal or plastic to shape an outside surface or a hole. Um, this is from, let's see, Latin, uh, broca, which is uh, the feminine of brocus, brocus, which means projecting. Now we have the second form of brooch. It is a verb from the 15th century. First is transitive. 1A, to pierce as a cask in order to draw the contents, also to open for the first time. I didn't realize that that thing was called a brooch or the act of opening up a cask is called broaching, um, but I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, when I think of the word brooch or the uh, the verb brooch, like, hey, I, I want to uh, broach this subject. God, it's such a weird word when you... All of words are weird. Um, you know, let let's broach this topic. Let's let's talk about this thing. Uh, so you you know you know you're opening up the uh, the opportunity to talk about a thing. So in this case, you're opening up the cask to get the contents from it. Okay, one B to open up or break into as a mine or stores. Two to shape or enlarge a hole with a brooch. Three A to make known for the first time. Three B to open up a subject for discussion. And now we have the intransitive one. It is to break the surface from below, like a whale broaching the surface. Uh, and then another a synonym is the word express. Brocher is a noun. Third form of brooch. This one is just an intransitive verb from 1705. To veer or yaw dangerously so as to lie broadside to the waves. To veer or yaw dangerously so as to lie broadside to the waves. And this is often used with the word to, like broach to. Next is broad, B-R-O-A-D. It is the first form adjective from before the 12th century. 1A, having ample extent from side to side or between limits as in broad shoulders. 1b, having a specified extension from side to side, as in made the path 10 feet broad. 2, extending far and wide, synonym is spacious, as in the broad plains. 3a, synonyms are open and full, as in broad daylight. 3b, synonyms are plain and obvious, as in a broad hint. Uh, number four, it says dialectical, especially in pronunciation. Wait, that is the definition. Dialectical, especially in pronunciation. Uh, so it can have a broad meaning. Dialectical, especially, I don't know. Uh, number five, marked by lack of restraint, delicacy, or subtlety. Uh, and then we have 5A, which uh, is obsolete. The synonym, outspoken. 5B, synonyms are coarse and risque, as in broad humor. Uh, number six is talking about a vowel, um, and it just has the synonym open. Uh, and this is used specifically of the letter A, pronounced as in father. Father. So the, the ah sound is called uh, broad or open, because your mouth is big and open father especially when you say it in a weird way like that father okay 7a we have fun don't we 7a synonyms are liberal and tolerant as in broad views i 
personally like those. 7B, widely applicable or applied. Uh, synonym is general, as in a broad rule. 8, relating to the main or essential points, as in broad outlines. Broadly is an adverb. Broadness is a noun. Uh, this is from Middle English, brood. From Old English, brad, akin to the Old High German breit, which means broad. And we have some synonym information. Broad, wide, deep mean having horizontal extent. Broad and wide apply to a surface measured or viewed from side to side, as in a broad avenue. Wide is more common when units of measurement are mentioned, as in rugs eight feet wide, or applied to unfilled space between limits, as in a wide doorway. Broad is preferred when full horizontal extent is considered, as in broad shoulders. Deep may indicate horizontal extent away from the observer or from a front or peripheral point, as in a deep cupboard, also as in deep woods. I always love reading the synonym information. Moving on to the second form of broad, it is an adverb from before the 12th century, in a broad manner. Synonym is fully, as in broad awake. That seems weird. I'm broad awake. I don't know. Uh, next is the third form of broad. It is a noun from 1659. Number one is British, uh, an expansion of a river, often used in plural. Number two is often offensive. I thought this might be in here. And it just has the synonym woman. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people who call women broads, and that's not so nice, I think. So next we have broad arrow, two words, noun from the 14th century. One, an arrow with a flat barbed head. Number two is British, a mark shaped like a broad arrow that identifies government property, including clothing formerly worn by convicts. Broad arrow, a mark shaped like a broad arrow that identifies government property. Ah, so it's like a, 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 a picture, a little... Uh, logo or something that they would put on clothes. Hmm. Maybe I can find a picture of that. Next is broad axe. Uh, broad with A-X at the end or A-X-E because, uh, you know, you can spell axe both ways. This is a noun from before the 12th century. A large axe with a broad blade. I think Gimli in Lord of the Rings, he's got an axe and I think it's technically, I think they call it a broad axe, but I could be wrong about that. Next is broadband, one word, adjective from 1960. One, operating at, responsive to, or comprising a wide band of frequencies, as in a broadband radio antenna. Two, of relating to or being a high-speed communications network, and especially one in which a frequency range is divided into multiple independent channels for simultaneous transmission of signals, as voice, data, or video. Broadband is a noun as well. Uh, next is broad bean. Two words, noun from 1783. The large, flat, edible seed of an old world upright vetch. Uh, scientific name, Vicia faba. And then it says also, this plant widely grown for its seeds and as fodder. Called also fava bean. And you can compare to the synonym favism or favism. What is that? Uh, Vicia faba. So faba became fava somehow. Hmm. Uh, the, o the only connection I have to fava beans is that line from the Silence of the Lambs. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know if I've ever eaten fava beans before. Last word for this episode is broad brush. Two words with a hyphen adjective from 1967. Synonyms are general and nonspecific. It's very broad brush. You're painting a broad brush of things. It's very just general and nonspecific. Uh, so we had bro, brooch, broad, broad arrow, broad axe, broad band, broad bean, and broad brush. Um... Broad had a lot of definitions and stuff. Um, 
But I think I'm going to pick... Um, does it matter what I pick? Probably not. Um, I will pick uh, Broad Arrow as the word of the episode because why not? Uh, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. Tune in tomorrow when I will be talking more about words and stuff. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Goodbye.